Hello everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel and this week's reading vlog. It is Wednesday afternoon, I had a really busy but quite dull morning in that I was mainly dealing with emails and doing a lot of admin -y stuff. So this afternoon I want to take advantage of the gorgeous weather and go to a nearby garden and do some raspberry picking. We picked some raspberries last week, which was lovely, and some gooseberries actually. But I want to get some raspberries today because I want to make this amazing fresh raspberry lemonade that Diana Henry, who's a cook I really like, posted on her Instagram, I think just yesterday or the day before. And I thought how amazing it looked and the recipe is actually in her cookbook, How to Eat a Peach and it just looks so gorgeous and so sort of refreshing it's her fresh raspberry lemonade so I thought how wonderful to go pick some fresh raspberries and make some lemonade and then we can sit out in the garden this evening and drink it and just really bask in the moment and enjoy these long summer evenings. I think it's so important to make the most of them because rain is on the way, which the garden will be very thankful for, but <laughs> we definitely need to take advantage of the sunshine while we can too. And I'd also like to do a bit of reading this evening as well. I'm reading The Swiss Summer by Stella Gibbons. I've just started this one and I haven't got that far in it yet. I'm sort of about page 24 and I'm really enjoying it. It's such a good summary read so far. It's all about a middle-aged woman who suddenly gets an unexpected invitation to go and spend the whole summer in a Swiss chalet. And it's set in the sort of late 1940s, early 50s, that kind of era. And it's really fascinating because the start of her book, the start of the book describes her voyage to Switzerland, travelling by train. And there's so much about post-war Britain as well as post-war France and the hardships of that time. And then her sudden arrival in Switzerland is made all the more enchanting because of the amazing food. She sits in a cafe when she gets to Interlaken train station and she has an apricot ice cream and she just looks at the scenery and she can't get over how beautiful and fresh and sort of vivid everywhere is. And she left London feeling very sort of grey and drab. So this arrival in Switzerland is just incredible. And I grew up partly in, in Switzerland, I went to school in Switzerland, so this book is really making me miss Switzerland, but it's so lovely to read about it and the descriptions are really, really lyrical of the landscape already. And I love it because the chapters are all um, headed with flower names, so m many of the chapter headings are Swiss flowers, summer English, what's chapter three, bird's eye, primrose, and I mean you know I love my flowers so I love the fact that each chapter starts with a sort of floral heading, I think that's really lovely. I can't wait to read more, I think um, there are going to be some rather eccentric characters sharing this chalet with the main protagonist and all sorts of little dramas going on, a bit of romance apparently as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting properly stuck in to this one. I haven't had a lot of time to read the past day or so. So yeah, the same things plans are to make raspberry lemonade, sit in the garden and read a lovely summery book. So I'll bring you along with me. Here's mum. <laughs> Hello. What a lovely day. It is, isn't it? It's Absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. We're both going to start picking. Definitely. We've got a punnet <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> See it there. We've got to fill it. So we better get busy. We better. <laughs>
we've got our lovely raspberries. They're really lovely. They look so nice. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for our fresh raspberry lemonade. I think that'll be delicious. It's so warm today. It is, it's isn't it? Definitely the weather for a really refreshing drink. But we're going to walk around the garden a little bit and then we'll head back home. Sounds good. We got home to a gift left on our doorstep from one of our neighbours. Some beautiful broad beans and some little ramekins because we had brought over some raspberry and gooseberry <laughs> crumble last week and they've just given back our, ram our ramekins but with some lovely broad beans too. That will be lovely. So we're back from our little excursion and I'm just having a look at the recipe. Mum is weighing out the raspberries so we have the right amount. I'll put a link to this recipe in the description box if you'd like it because Diana Henry linked it herself to, I think it's on the Telegraph and it may be behind a paywall but I don't believe I subscribed to the Telegraph and when I clicked through and looked at the recipe I could see it and I think you're also able to get a free trial for a while if you if you have trouble accessing it for some reason so you can always check that out whoops <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> that's alright anyway I'll put the link in the description box so you can have a look but the recipe is also in how to eat a peach if you have that one I'm so pleased with these broad beans. That was really a lovely surprise. So thank you for helping me do this lemonade. Oh, it's going to be delicious. I, I'm excited. Yeah. We've got the raspberries. Yeah. We've got the fresh lemons as well. Yeah. So the first step is we're going to put the raspberries in the bowl and add some sugar, right? Yeah, four tablespoons of caster sugar. And you picked out the sort of extra ripe and I nice did. looking raspberries. Yes, well did. done. <laughs> so while the raspberries are soaking up the sugar, mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and water, I think. Thank the you. garden needs it. I think I'll do something with those broad beans, perhaps in a in a salad tonight. Oh, that would be nice. Oh. Lovely, fresh, broad beans. I love them. Yes. Yeah. A real summer treat. It is. And then I think we should also set up outside with our books. What a lovely and idea. And enjoy the evening. Sounds good. <laughs> You already mm. podded the beans. I did, so I did. I absolutely love um, the insides of the pods. They're like snug little beds, aren't they? The way they're sort of they are, really sort of furry. Yeah, almost. yeah, it's yes. all like that spongy or something. Yes, they are. But we're talking about tomorrow, aren't we? Yes, we are. And we think you're going to Fountains Abbey. Yes, we've been before. It's absolutely yeah. lovely. Can't wait to take you with us this time. Yes. I think it must have been 11 years ago. I was trying to remember. Our very first visit to Yorkshire. Yeah. We came with my Canadian grandmother. Yeah. And that was the first time we went to Fountains Abbey. It was. And we it was just so incredible impressed. ruined abbey and the views all around mm. it are just so gorgeous. It's romantic, isn't it's, it? Yes, it's really romantic. There's just something very special about it. And we went there in the autumn, 
last year. Yes. But we haven't been back since. No, no, so And really I don't think I've filmed film. being there at all. So. No, I think you took some pictures maybe. Yes, but I don't think I caught it on camera. So oh, well. <laughs> we'll to do tomorrow. That this time. Tomorrow yes. will be fun. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the raspberry puree mixture that's been sieved and the lemon juice. I'm just going to pop the zest into the jug and we'll add all the rest. Yum. I know, it does smell so good. Mm. The fragrance of the lemon is amazing. With the raspberries now too. Yes, it really is incredible. In. I sieved the lemon juice too, so there aren't any seeds Bits. in there. Yeah. Don't really want that. No, I don't like pips. Do you? Look at that colour. Yeah, it's gorgeous, isn't so it? So gorgeous. Mm. I'm very excited about this. Yum. And I've got the chairs and our little butler table set up mm. outside. Perfect. So I've given this a stir. Come in so you can see the colour. Okay. It's just so stunning. Look at that colour. It's just beautiful. So here we are, out in the garden. What do you think of the raspberry lemonade? Well, I think it's delicious. I really do. Have another sip for yeah. us. <laughs> mm. It's tangy, but not too sour. But it's just got that lovely zip to it that lemonade <laughs> has. I absolutely love it. Oh, it looks really good. I haven't tried it yet. I can't wait. Well, you have to come try it. What are you reading? I've started Angela Thurkel's Summer Half. I've read them all many times before, but I've actually spent this one for some reason I haven't read for a long time, so I'm looking forward to reading it. Oh yes, I always love Angela Thurkel. That's yeah. a great choice. Yeah. I, of course, have The Swiss Summer. Yes. So I'm going to sit and enjoy my raspberry lemonade and read for a bit. Sounds wonderful. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Mm. Good help. Mm. Delicious. Yes. Good morning everyone, it is Thursday morning and mum and I are about to head off to Fountains Abbey which I'm really looking forward to, it's such a beautiful day today and there are some lovely gardens around the abbey as well so I'm really excited. I'm also excited because the post just came and I've got a parcel from Christopher Brown, who is an artist from London that I got to know a little bit when I lived in London. And I'm so excited to see what's in here. So I thought I'd open it up with you. Oh wow, <gasps> amazing. So he sent me this book, Meet the Georgians, Epic Tales from Britain's Wildest Century by Robert Peel. And Christopher Brown has done the cover design, which is gorgeous. I'll show that to you. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if it's illustrated. Oh, it looks like it might be. Hold on. Oh yes, look how fabulous. 
It sounds really interesting, the book itself too. Here's another one. I love his illustrations. They have so much humour in them and he's just so clever. It says, welcome to the world of the Georgians. Mad, bad and dangerous to know. That is how Lord Byron, the poet who drank wine from a monk's skull and slept with his half-sister, was described by one of his many lovers. As it happens, mad, bad and dangerous serves as a good description for the entire Georgian period. Often neglected, the hundred or so years between the coronation of George I in 1714 and the death of George IV in 1830, were quite possibly the wildest era in British history. This book tells its story through 12 extraordinary characters, a dirty dozen of wicked women, regency rogues and fearless freedom fighters. That sounds so much fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading this. It'll be so interesting to learn a bit more about Georgian society and this sounds like it will be really interesting and beautifully illustrated so thank you Christopher Brown and then he's included a tea towel one of his tea towel designs which I love I love nice tea towels I really do have a bit of a thing for tea towels and I have some Christmas ones that Christopher did which I adore and here's one of his designs here. I love his quirky illustrations and the colours on this are so summery. That's so lovely. So what a nice surprise to <laughs> get that this morning. I'm so thrilled. I've just read the description of the tea towel and it says it's of, his illustration is of Lady Hester Stanhope who was born in 1776 and died in 1839. She was a famous adventurer and traveller and the first field archaeologist to use modern archaeological principles. So that's amazing. So clever of him to send me um, such a brilliant tea towel that matches his book. It looks like he's done a series on great Georgian heroes. And this is a pioneering woman within this collection, which is just perfect for me. So yes, thank you so much to Christopher. And I can't wait to hang this in the kitchen. I'll put a link to Christopher Brown and the book, obviously, in the description box if you want to check them out. Like I said, I am a big fan of his artwork. He's also just a really lovely person. So... I was just so thrilled to get those things. It was really sweet. So we're going to go off to fountains really soon now. I think mum is just finishing getting ready. Really good timing because our new National Trust cards just arrived this morning and our little um, new parking voucher. So that was like brilliant timing. So I can't wait to go. And I thought I'd chat to you a bit too, actually, about some of the books that I've been reading recently that have inspired this trip a little bit. So I'm just going to go get them and I'll set you up so I can chat through them a little bit with you. So mum has come and joined me now. Hello. <laughs> you were busy ironing. <laughs> I was. I had, My dress looked like a rag, so I had to iron it. So that's what took so long. <laughs> well, you kindly ironed my dress too earlier this morning. So. Well, I, I quite like ironing. I always think it's... You're you know, much better at it than I am. Yeah, I, I find it restful. Impatient. You do. Yes. But um, I wanted to chat through some books, <laughs> as, always, as always, with you. <laughs> yes, because these books have really been what inspired our trip today. Although we love Fountain Abbey, I especially wanted to go after doing a bit of a reread yes. of The Abbey Books by Elsie Oxenham. So I've spoken before on here about my love for vintage children's books, particularly girls' school stories, that kind of genre, how much I love the Chalet School books by Eleanor Brenton and the Dimsey books by Dorita Fairley Bruce, but my absolute favourite author is Elsie Oxenham and well, she Elsie J. Elsie J. Oxenham. She loved to use her initials. Yeah, often. well they all did, didn't yeah. they? <laughs> <laughs> Eleanor M. Brent Dyer. Yeah. 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 
Well, fairly bruised. Yeah, she was a little bit more restrained. She was there. a bit more, but, but you a lot still of them say E F B E D and E J O to the people yeah. in the know. <laughs> the big three. Um, these books were written in the sort of early nineteen hundreds. They're very much of their time. I mean, they're very old fashioned, mm. and they are certainly stories of their time. So you have to read them with that understanding. Mm. But I found them utterly charming when I was young and yeah, she still do. enjoyed them so much. She made me start reading them. I didn't know of these and I absolutely <laughs> loved them too. So it became a shared passion and yeah. we collected together. And yes. Yes. Yeah. And an Abbey, as you might guess, features very strongly in these books. And what happens is one of the main characters inherits a ruined abbey and it's based on a real abbey it's based on Cleve Abbey in Somerset which we visited when I was young because of me being such a big fan of the abbey yeah, books we wanted special. to go and it was a really special trip to yes. go and yes. to see it highly recommended actually yes I collected all of the kind of vintage editions when I was young painstakingly yes found them you found so many for me I think this was your first wasn't it yes the Abbey Girls at Home you can read them out of order just you did yes I did you can read them out of order because I mean they're very difficult to find so you kind of have to read them out of order a bit the very first is called the Girls of the Hamlet Club but the main characters of this whole series are introduced in the Abbey Girls my very first Abbey book was The Abbey Girls at Home. Yeah. And that's an appropriate title in a way because they're not really traditional school stories, especially as the series progresses. Yeah. There's much more about the girls at home and their family line, yeah, I would say. Yeah. And they're really books about female friendship, which I really loved even then. Mm-hmm. But Girls Gone By have reprinted some of the Abbey Girl titles. Mm-hmm. I have a stack of them here and I'll film a little cutaway too so you can see more of them. So it's great that they have done some but I don't think they will be reprinting these ones and they were printed a little while ago. Yeah. Um, but we do have a few which, yes. is, which is wonderful yeah. that they have done some of yes. them. That's really brilliant Um, and as always they include all of the interesting publishing information and the original artwork the plates Mm. all of that from the originals so it's lovely to have these for that reason too and these are my kind of reading copies because the old ones are getting so fragile now yes yes it's lovely to have both obviously yes. but it's yes. so nice to have reading copies and I think the EJO Society is also yes they're also republishing yeah uh, some of them yes so this is one done by the EJO Society so it's great that they're republishing them as well yeah and yeah um do you think it was the dance thing well, that was a big it was a big part you? of it big theme in the stories is folk dancing mm-hmm. the girls learn both folk and Morris dancing they form the Hamlet club in the first book and in this club they learn to do all this sort of dancing and then the school elects a May Queen every year and I loved even then I loved the descriptions of country traditions yes. like that yes. having the maypole and the may queen and doing folk dancing and i just loved all of the detail they're so detailed these days even are. the sort of china they use and the yes. pottery they find yes there's there's clothes. so much about that and the clothes and and the specific dance tunes which yeah. are all these old sort of country dance tunes lovely we hit she me. gives all the titles yes i remember I was searching so that you searching could get... online so i could try yes. to listen to them yeah. yeah so um i just loved so much about these books but i reread the abbey girls just quite recently and in this book I hadn't remembered, but they actually talk quite a bit about the great abbeys of Yorkshire and Fountains Abbey in particular as just this amazing example of an abbey. And in fact, Fountains is, I think, the biggest 
Yes, ruined mm. Abbey in the country. So it's really special that we are pretty close to it yeah. and get to go and see it. So we're looking forward to bringing you along too because it really is a special site. And rereading this recently made me think, well, I really want to go back. Yes, yes. And to see it again. And then, pure coincidence, I know. a few days ago, I know. Just look at what mum found in the charity shop. A death at Fountains Abbey. Now, this isn't what's going to happen now. This is set. I certainly <laughs> hope not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I um, stone you to death if you dance, a <laughs> merry dance or anything. No, not, I this won't do any apparent... folk dancing in the cloisters, don't worry. <laughs> this is apparently set in late spring 1728. Oh, um, so historical thriller indeed. Well, we're going to have to read that. I'm going to have to read I hope, it. I hope it's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll have to see, but yes. Very appropriate. Yeah. So we better get going. Yeah, definitely. So we can get there a bit early. Um, but we'll bring you along with us as always. So we're here at Fountains Abbey. We're just walking along this lovely leafy path. It's lovely and shady here. It is. It feels nice and cool, <laughs> which is wonderful. And we're going to come across a very dramatic view of, of the abbey from up yes. here. I'll show you. Hello, hello there. Trying to find some shade. Poor you. The beautiful grounds of Fountains Abbey and the attached Studley Royal Water Garden are recognised as a World Heritage Site and are a must visit if you're in North Yorkshire. You can picnic along the river, follow paths through the deer park, take in spectacular views and feel as though you've stepped back in time as you amble through the atmospheric ruins of one of the largest Cistercian monasteries in England. It's lovely in the shade, isn't it's it? It's beautiful in the shade. <laughs> yeah. What a lovely place. What an atmosphere. I know, it's so special. It's so looking nice. up. So I've left mum at a cafe having an ice cream and a bit of a rest because it's so hot. I'm walking down to the water gardens which are really beautiful. You can see, oh can you see the abbey behind me there? So I'm going to go for a bit of a longer walk and then I'll come back and pick up mum. But she's happy, she's in the shade with a book and her ice cream. So that's good. <laughs> I'm standing in the Temple of Piety here and look at the incredible view that I'm looking at. Just stunning. There are some nesting swans just over there.
so we're in the car now. It was a wonderful Beautiful, afternoon, wasn't it? Beautiful, long afternoon. Yes. yes. Yeah, it was really fabulous. So much to see. I'm quite hot now, but it was really lovely. It was. <laughs> Did it you was enjoy your ice cream? Very, very much. <laughs> Good. It's delicious. And it wasn't as busy as we worried it might be not at all so that was good and you don't have to pre-book anymore no it to was go lovely. so that was very nice but i'm going to finish off the vlog here because i've got so much editing to do for this one and it's going up tomorrow so i've got to get busy but thank you so much for watching do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face it pops up on the screen but I'll see you again next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye. Bye-bye.